Good evening, my friends. I come to you from the studio with every fan and air conditioner turned on that I could possibly get my hands on. I hope that this finds you staying safe and uh, cool or cold. I don't know which one you like better, but oh boy, is it warm outside. It's so warm outside that, that they put warnings out publicly that say, you know, if you have pets from like 2 to 6 p.m., consider not letting them outside. I mean, that that's it's hot out there. I don't know why. Everybody wants to blame this thing, that thing, or the other. Who knows? I just know it's extremely hot. So I hope you're staying somewhere cool, that you're staying somewhere comfortable and safe, and that this finds you doing well. I appreciate you being here and being part of this chance here in the middle of the week we have just to share a little a little thought after, after being outside a minute uh, all these days, but especially this afternoon. Um, but just just hope, I hope that you're well. I hope that things are going good for you. I hope that life is presenting you all of the opportunities that you need to see how often God gives us the opportunity to choose happiness in, in every corner of, of the affairs that we deal with every single day. But it is hot, and it does mean that everything you do outside is hot. And so that's a, that's a challenging thing. Before I go too far, can I remind those of you locals who uh, might be a member of ELBC or want to participate in something on a Sunday afternoon, we're having a church work day this coming Sunday, so from 4 to 6, if you can be here at church, I'm going to give you, somebody's going to give you, I might have already been given mine, but we're going to have assignments to accomplish things to do just to love on our own, our own congregation, our own sanctuary, our own church that God has entrusted to us. So if you can be here for that, I encourage you to be. All sorts of things coming up, so snag calendars every chance you can get uh, and see where God would have you be a part of, of all the things going on. But today was a day where I was having the opportunity uh, to be a part of something that doesn't happen as often as it used to. We have other contacts, other connections, so we get the chance to sort of spread out our uh, food deliveries. But we had some gracious people willing to go pick it up in Starkville. We needed to be kind of, we're, we're backloading our food pantry as we've been giving out as much as we can. And so there was about, I think they said, 16, 1,700 pounds of stuff that had to be unloaded. That, that amount never, that doesn't change. That, that amount would be that amount, whatever it is. But, it, you know, something different about having to do that when it's so hot outside, so hot. And so somebody's got to draw the short stick and be in the trailer to unload it. And someone is hauling it, uh, or someone's. And so big thanks uh, for, for Amy being here to help, for Mr. Steve and Miss Sue for picking it up. Big shout out to Becky for for choosing not being assigned choosing to be in the trailer alicia's there we're all just hauling it back and forth back and forth and and somebody it apparently seems somebody took a picture of me uh while we were working and then shortly after we got finished so i wanted to show you this was me after we finished working outside uh now obviously that's not me that's from the movie airplane for those of you who are old enough to know what that is but i i, I thought of that scene in this in this silly comedy movie as we were working outside because it's just pouring out of everywhere your forearms are soaking wet your hands your head your if you're me your back your legs your feet in your shoes you can tell are are getting ever so slightly uh, comfortable and and like a sauna you know it's just so hot and this is what I've learned after years of sweating and some of you know uh, the story of my father, my father sweats like I do, or maybe it's more fair to say I sweat like he does. And I used to make fun of him, I used to poke fun of him about how much he sweat. You know, I might be outside watching him work on his car, work, work on his truck, and uh, there would literally be a, a, a puddle, like not, not some huge, but like a puddle where it was just dripping off of his nose. And I would laugh and tease, and he probably wanted to smack me. Now, though, the joke is that I do the same thing. <laughs> so, so be careful what you make fun of. But I've learned about me that, you know, the funny thing is if I'm in a situation where I'm starting to sweat, there's almost this time period, right? You know, you, you're dry, you're normal, and then there's that moment where you start to sweat. And I'm not going to, you know, be gross about sweating, but you start to feel sweat forming you start to lately it starts to be that i notice my forearms are shimmery as a as a i mean they shine all of a sudden because there's going to be sweat and then uh you know your shirt starts sticking to you and you're pulling and you're you're moving around you're trying to be comfortable and, and i notice that that's when i'm the most agitated 
because it has to happen. It, you're gonna, sw you're not gonna unload almost a full ton of food, a literal ton of food, and not sweat in weather like this. I mean, we all know that, but it's almost like I want to fight. Like I'm gonna keep myself from sweating. I'm gonna keep my shirt dry. I'm gonna not deal with it. And so I get grumpy on the inside. Now, whether it comes out on the outside, you have to ask somebody else. But I get grumpy on the inside that I'm about to sweat, that I don't want to sweat, I'm going to sweat. Ugh. And so you kind of have this uncomfortable unease. And, and if you're not careful, you might get sma snappy or you might get sour towards people during that. Now, once, you, once your shirt is wet, once it doesn't matter, it's soaked, it's got spots all over it, your under, wherever it, it hits you the most, you know. Once that's kind of happened, at least for me, well, then I'm over the grumpy part. It's just like, eh, whatever. Wipe your forehead. Get on with it. You know, move on. But it's that, it's that moment where I know it's going to happen. I know it's got to happen, but I don't want it to happen. That I get the most agitated at it happening. And for whatever reason, recently, I couldn't help but think about uh, something that Paul wrote to the Philippians about work and about work being done. And so I'm going to show it to you here. This is right at the very beginning of Philippians chapter 1. This is verse 6 behind me. And he's writing to them. And oddly enough, he's writing to them from prison. So he's, he's not in the best, happiest of situations, but he's praising what he hears about them. He pr he's praising the fact that they are faithful, that God is doing such amazing stuff through them. And he says, I'm certain, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Your translation may say perfection at the day of Jesus Christ. The, that God who started something in you is going to finish what he started in you. And he's going to do that. The ultimate finishing will take place there just above that shoulder, over, over that way, uh, where it says, at the day of Jesus Christ. That's the end. That's when time has, has ceased. Now, why that has anything to do with sweating is that just like I, I have that angry moment, that agitated moment, that frustrated moment when I can tell, Ugh, you know, I'm, a, I, ugh, I'm about to sweat. I don't want to sweat. I'm about to sweat. But that's, that's part of the work is, the, is, is that's going to happen. You know, you can't. You can't stand out in that parking lot during distribution and not sweat. It's, I mean, this maybe, maybe after all of these years on record as being the absolute hottest distribution. So God bless every soul that was here to make that happen. But it just, so you're going to sweat. It's going to happen. That moment, though, where you may be fighting against it is a lot like that moment where God is accomplishing something in us, but we fight against what we know he's doing. You know, he wants to make us patient, but we fight against those, those moments that are testing and forming patience in us. He, 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 he is designed for us to be loving and forgiving, and yet we, we, we push or, or pull, whatever you want to say. We, 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 we don't like the time that we have to forgive. We, don't, we fight against that until we're finally given over to it. And then it, it just is. It's just done. Now, one of my favorite parts about this passage is the reminder, and you don't find it in English. You've got to go digging in the Greek. The word, whether you're going to translate it completion or perfection, it, it, that doesn't so much matter, but that big word behind me, completion. In Greek, that word is, is uh, continual, the, the, the conjugation of that word. It's a future tense, so he's going to keep making you better over time over and over and over again he's going to keep pushing you he's going to push you to the finish line no matter what because that's what he does so paul is saying i know that god has started something in you and i also know that he is going to continually perfect that until it is finished ultimately at the day of, you're going to be what he's called you to be he's going to be what he's made you to be because he's going to do it and paul says i'm sure of this and i just was reminded of that even today uh i had to wait to dry off fully before i even hit record <laughs> because i mean i got my towel here i was i was dabbing and dobbing and 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 waving and praying that the air conditioner coolness would make its way to this side of the room quicker than normal and that fan is on and i got a little desk fan 
very girly looking, so I'm glad you can't see it. But all sorts of things that might be blowing and making noise right in here, and I apologize for that. But I don't apologize for being dry, finally. And so out there with boxes of pistachios and cheese and lentils and split peas and applesauce and whatever else it was, there was that moment where that, that, that thing is going to get unloaded. It's going to get unloaded because that's what we do. But right there during, during that first part, I just, I don't want to sweat. I don't, ugh. and then I finally surrender to that. Sweat happens, and I get about doing the work. And I, I just thought of this, and I wanted to, to encourage you in this. You know, maybe there's an area in your life where you just, you're in that point of wanting to push and like, no, I, I don't like that part. And I can understand that, but if you just get past that, if you just move past that ugh, part, could get into the work and regardless of what you're trying to stay away from it, it doesn't matter you can just get into it and then you have the privilege of watching God get it done in you just like today a handful of us had the privilege of watching that trailer get emptied did all of us sweat who were involved in it absolutely if you were outside pulling a hand truck tossing boxes inside that trailer whatever you were sweating no question but it got done because it's going to get done. That's what Paul's saying. I know he's going to finish that. I know he is. But the work has to happen. And so maybe sometime this week you can just give in to whatever sweat is about to happen. You can just give it. It's going to happen. And it's fine that it happens. And that's part of the greatness of God that he walks us through that so that we can see him fully glorified in all of the different things he's given us to do. I hope you'll think about that. Uh, especially even when you walk outside and you start pouring sweat out like that. <laughs> so you'll think, you know, this is part of, of whatever I'm supposed to be becoming. And, and that's awesome that God gives us that, that opportunity. Let me pray for you. Father, as we finish up here tonight, I, I, I'm always grateful for the technology we have and the time we live in where w we can be hot but also come into a place that helps us cool off. There are those who don't know this joy. And... Uh, I pray you would help us not take it for granted, but also that we wouldn't be so committed to comfort that we would be afraid of completing the work that you have started in us, that we would be fearful or, or worrisome over, over what you're doing in us. So I really don't know any way to make it make sense in my heart other than to say, help me be okay with the sweat. Help me be okay with the the working out of things, the getting started, the getting through the middle, whatever part it is that I don't like or that we have trouble with, help us drive through that on your shoulders and just accept the work that you're doing through us and accept all that you're accomplishing in us, things that you have prepared since before we ever were. Lord, what a beautiful and, and awesome thing we have been given to live, work, and and draw our very being from from your purpose, from your plan. You are good, and you have such good things in store for us. I just pray you would keep our eyes focused on you and focused on the calling you've placed over each and every one of us. Help us be about the work that you've given us and know that in each and every part of that, we are being, as the Bible says, perfected, made better and better until one day, standing before you face to face, we are made glorified in your presence. All because of the work you did and the work you continue to do for us and in us. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for grace. Thank you for Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thank you so much for everything you make possible, for everything you do in this congregation or wherever you may be. You just happen to be interacting with this video. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the work that you recognize God has called you to and for the desire and the drive you have to see that work accomplished. Awesome things are happening because of you. If nobody's told you lately, you're a really big deal, and I'm glad to be a part of your life. Wherever you're about to go and whatever you're about to do, do not forget that our greatest calling in life is to pour out kindness on the world because of the kindness Jesus has poured out on us all. I love you. Thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your week, everybody. Good night and bye-bye.